For a buyer, um, you know, gone through the process, you found the home, um, at which point do the buyer go into your office and say, well, you know, I'm ready to sign and, and commit and pay that 10% deposit? When the decision is made that you're going to, you're going to purchase, mm -hmm. the attorneys will communicate with each other and they will say to me, or to any attorney, mm -hmm. they will say to them, so you're buying a property at lot six. The attorney at law who is handling the matter on behalf of the vendor, the mm -hmm. person selling, right. will normally send a document to me which will show me that their client owns this property at lot six. Mm -hmm. I will have a look at it and they will also send me the agreement for me to peruse. Right. And often times they'll send a plan as well. Okay. What okay. the attorney's responsibility then is to look at that agreement, mm -hmm. look at the document he sent. Right. I then look at those documents and I read the agreement for sale and I make sure that we're dealing with the same property, mm -hmm. make sure the purchase price is in order, right. make sure that the description of the land. Right. And after I am satisfied that there are no problems associated with the agreement, I, at least right, I right. can look at the agreement and see everything appears to be in order for my client to pay over that 10% deposit. Okay. okay. And the 10% deposit is usually paid over to the vendor's attorney as a stakeholder, right. which means that they hold it on behalf of both parties in case something goes wrong, mm -hmm. then the monies can be refunded or forfeited as the case may be. Right. On what happens. What's the, the duration you could keep in mind? for a real estate transaction to last for? If you have a cash transaction yeah. and your documents are in order, right. you can actually complete the conveyance in four to six weeks. Yes. If it's a cash transaction, all of the documents are in order. Right. Land taxes paid, okay. there are no encumbrances anywhere, there's, there's nothing, you can do it in six weeks. Right. Where there is a mortgage, however, yes. you need to tell your clients clear three months mm -hmm. and onward and if there are any complications with respect to the title mm -hmm. that could be six months how could clients try to safeguard to make sure they choose the right attorney what i would suggest to clients to do is to do your due diligence tour mm -hmm. you you read the reports in the newspapers and so you read them and you see those names mm -hmm. but then you need to engage other persons yeah engage yourself mm -hmm. and persons in the business who may have some some information that they might want to share. You will see the internet mm -hmm. and you look and you see whether the firm or the person is reputable. Right, right. And more often than not, when you go there, you can get a feel for mm -hmm. the type of person you're dealing with. Ask right. questions. Yes. Ask people. Mm -hmm. And as I said already, your team and you keep your ears to the ground. Okay, when it comes to attorneys and legal fees, what fees should a client budget for? I think that the most prudent thing would be to find out the cost you're dealing with before you even engage your services. Right. Um, the thing is that with real estate transactions, mm -hmm. we have, we are guided by the remuneration for non-contentious business rules. Uh, okay. But okay. that has been in place since the 1970s, I believe, mm -hmm. and we are now looking to review it. But we are usually guided by that, and it, it absolutely states that it's a minimum fee. Oh, okay. So okay. we sometimes invite clients to actually look at it and right. work it out themselves, mm -hmm. but we remind them that it's minimum.